It's hard to intentionally get scammed, to set out there and really try to get ripped off outside of maybe paying AT&T or Spectrum for internet. We still tried though. We bought this GTX 1050 one gigabyte card that was listed on eBay, at least that's what it was called. The card was $80 and was advertised as a new GTX 1050 with one gigabyte of video memory, and it even came with a questionable, definitely not malware CD in an unbranded brown box. Opening up GPU-Z, it even thinks that this is a GTX 1050 and knows that it has one gigabyte of RAM, so everything looks right. Today, we'll benchmark the card and explain how this scam works and how they're able to trick software like GPU-Z. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut liquid metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. So we'll keep this fairly short. Part of what we're gonna do today is pull off the cooler here and see what GPU is actually underneath. Because as you'll see in some of the performance results, it doesn't line up with 1050 performance. And we'll cut a few of the charts out or really shorten them just because it kind of you get the point across after three or four of them really. Also, uh, testing methodology note, I did not install the drivers from this unlabeled DVD-R with butterflies on it uh, because I'm not sure what's on here and I don't want it on my network, whatever it is. So we got the drivers straight from NVIDIA. They worked just fine pulling the latest version. The card I'll note is not NVIDIA's doing. So just because they made the GT1030 DDR4 card, which is like the worst we've looked at in the last year, don't be mad at NVIDIA for this one. They deserve the anger for the 1030 DDR4 card. But this one is something you'll find basically on AliExpress and eBay. So it is not a sanctioned product, at least not as it's advertised, though it was at one point an NVIDIA product. And we'll see what that was as we get towards the end of the content. So other than that, I think we can just get straight into the testing. As always, if you want to know what platform we use for testing, check the article linked in the description below for testing methodology. Otherwise, we'll go through a couple of charts and then take the cooler off and see what it is. Let's start with Ghost Recon Wildlands at 1080p with medium settings, just because we already had some data on the 1050 and RX 560 cards. The card instantly maxes out its VRAM capacity and ends up overall worst in performance. The eBay GTX 1051 gigabyte card operates an average frame rate of 21 FPS with the GTX 1050 properly at 47 FPS average. Note that the 1050 is from MSI and is named 1050 OC, but it's not actually overclocked, they just called it that. Regardless, we're at over a 2x difference between the two. Here's a quick frame time plot that shows the chaotic performance of the GTX 1050 1GB scam card. Remember, with frame times, we're looking at frame to frame latency on delivery, so the important part is a consistently low frame delivery interval. Having the line jump up and down and all over the place is bad. It indicates stuttery performance. And also having a higher overall line indicates lower frame rate. 16 milliseconds would be 60 FPS reverence. This 1050 might actually be worse than the GT 1030 DDR4 card that we recently talked about. Okay, maybe it's not that bad. This is Dota 2. The GT 1030 DDR4 manages to hold its crown as the worst card tested this year, a true accolade. The GTX 1051 GB scam card manages 61 FPS average, which is still impressively worse than the GT 1030 GDDR5 card 67 FPS average and is outside of margin of error. CSGO shows similar results, with the GT 1030 GDDR5 card outperforming the GTX 1051 GB card by 10%. The new 1050 that we bought isn't looking so good. The Raven Ridge R5 2400G performs within arm's reach even when overclocked to 1600 MHz on the IGP, and this is without looking at any real 1050. It's just the scam one we bought, so it can't even match up really with a 1030 GDDR5 card. Sniper Elite 4 is the last before we pause the charts to see what's going on under the hood. Before even showing the chart, take a look at this gameplay clip of Sniper Elite. Sniper Elite is dumping the texture quality with some meshes coming back nearly textureless, and that's a result of the one gigabyte memory capacity. The card can't even keep up enough to render the full texture quality. Even still, here's a chart. We're seeing 22 FPS average for the GTX 1051 gigabyte, with the EVGA GT 1030 GDDR5 card outperforming an alleged GTX 1051 gigabyte overall. 
The question remains then, what's really under the hood on this thing? So now it's time to take the cooler off and see what's really in there, because it's not a GTX 1050. It is maybe Pascal, but it's performing worse than a GT 1030 in some cases, so we'll see. All that came with the product was this brown box and this DVD. That's it. And then the video card itself, if you can call it a video card at this point. So there's the video card. This thing is uh, an older design from a previous generation. The single fan axial cooler with a, a extremely thin aluminum heatsink. So this is an aluminum heatsink that is not too different from some of the 1050 cards on the market, but either way, it's not a good one. Only four screws holding this thing together. Should be pretty quick. You can see here, by the way, it says GTX 1050 one gigabyte GDDR5, uh, 5400 megahertz, and it claims a core of 928 megahertz. Uh, also, it's got HDMI and VGA on it, which if you've had a Pascal card or have looked at Pascal, VGA is extremely uncommon, though we will allow that maybe in the uh, Asia market, it might be more common. So maybe that's a difference there, but they say it's a 1050. So let's see if it really is. Thermal paste. All right, so there's our card. The cooler is very unimpressive. Okay, so time to see what it is. First of all, this is not a Pascal package. If you've seen our Pascal teardowns in the past, they don't look like this anymore. They don't orient them this way. The whole spacing is incorrect for a 1050, so it's probably not one of those. Okay, so it's all clean now. Let's see. This thing is GK 106220-A. You might be asking, what the hell is a GK106? I haven't heard of that Pascal GPU. That's because K stands for Kepler, which is an architecture that, that well, the GK106 specifically was the 650 Ti. So if you remember the, this GPU, or if you remember the 650 Ti, that's what this is. GK106 is a 650 Ti. And that card came out in end of 2012. October 2012 is when this GPU came out. It is now almost six years old. And uh, you can see also how old this is because it's got Alpida memory on it. These memory modules, first of all, there are four of them, despite being one gigabyte, which tells us the uh, density of the modules, but also they're Alpida. Alpida was bought in 2013 by Micron. They don't even really exist anymore. They've been acquired. So Alpida memory no longer exists. And uh, that should really just show how old this is. So it's it's been secretly rebranded as a 1050. Remember, this was an NVIDIA product at one point, this thing, but this card as a whole, branded as a 1050, certainly is not an NVIDIA product. And the other sad thing here is that even the, the process is different. So Pascal is 16 nanometers, and this thing was 28, I think, for Kepler. Very different architectures. Uh, Kepler came after Fermi and before Maxwell. And then Pascal was after Maxwell. So Pascal is, is significantly newer. This is no GTX 1050. It's a 650 Ti at the end of the day is, is what we've learned here. So uh, the 650 Ti was fine at one point, but how did they do it, I guess, is the question. It shows up as a 1050 in GPU-Z and another software, and it does show up with the correct amount of memory. It is one gigabyte after all, but the 1050 labeling comes from just a BIOS. So it's a BIOS mod, and all they did was rename the card in that BIOS mod. It's actually not that difficult to do, uh, particularly on, on Kepler, where it was easier to do hacks on the video cards that have been largely locked down on Pascal. So it's a lot harder to get away with this kind of stuff now. It's unlikely that you'll see the same kind of trick with the same level of success in a couple of years when actual 1050s are branded as say 11 or 1250s or whatever. So probably won't see quite as much of it. I'm sure there'll still be scams, but basically they just changed the name of it in BIOS and then flashed it onto the card and that's how it's done. So performance is a 650 Ti. We'll put some extra charts on the screen. We did Ashes, uh, we did Firestrike and Time Spy, did a couple of other games as well. And it's just, it's not worth talking through them because I guess 
I guess there's one benefit here. If you've been wondering how a 650 Ti performs, we've accidentally benchmarked it. So now you have numbers for that. It's just labeled as eBay 1051 gigabyte. So that's it for this one. Don't buy the card. It's 80 bucks on eBay. Do not buy it. It is a scam. There are plenty of other ones on there. You can normally tell them apart because the price is too good to be true. If that's the case, it probably is too good to be true, especially because this was branded as new. It's not like it was a used device, in which case it would be harder to detect the, the scam. And also, uh, you can kind of tell because there's probably no branding on the card at all, and they probably don't list it as like Asus Gigabyte EVGA, anything like that. It's probably just listed as GTX 1050 or whatever. So that's it. Pretty interesting scam, I guess. That's the new one. As always, thank you for watching. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up this shirt. This is our new limited edition foil shirt with the teardown logo, the anniversary logo on it for our 10 year anniversary commemoration of the uh, original teardown logo design. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick it up. Once they're gone, they're gone. We're not restocking them. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for access to our behind the scenes videos and bonus Ask GNs. And subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.